Peace and blessings. This is the Grand Cuts channel. What's good? Hope everyone is well. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I want to go over something right quick, right? I've been thinking about considering a verse in the Bible. Jesus uh, was crucified and died for our sins. And the question is, did Satan bring sin, right? Did Satan bring sin? And if Satan is the orchestrator of sin, right, then what was the real role of Jesus if he was crucified, right? Now, was he crucified because of Satan? Was he crucified because of God? What was the purpose of Jesus Christ if he was crucified only to fight against sin and cover sin in the heavens? Right. Think about it. What was Jesus Christ's purpose if he's here or was brought here to banish sin from you, right? When you repent and bring Jesus into your heart, how can he fight against Satan if Satan wasn't destroyed? I don't know if there's any verses in the Bible where it says Satan was destroyed or crucified, right? The death is sin, okay? But if, if Jesus Christ is in heaven, how can he continue to fight against Satan, the serpent, the devil, if the devil is still on the earth roaming in human form, right? So the passage that got me thinking about this is this, and this is Job 2.2, 2, right? It says, on another day, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him, the Lord. Okay. Now, Job, we know that this is going on. This activity, right, is going on prior to even Jesus being born. Okay. And at this time, the Lord, Yahweh, is the condemner of evil, unrighteousness, and sin. Okay. I ask again, what is the purpose of Jesus Christ if Yahweh is in the Old Testament condemning the sin? Okay. Now, Satan, the sons of God, and the Lord got to have an appearance, okay? They are speaking as if they are on the earth, right? They are speaking as if they are on the earth, right? <clears throat> and how do we know that? Because the next verse to the Lord asks Satan, where have you come from? Said the Lord. And the Lord is Yahweh to Satan. They're having a conversation, which means they must be able to speak. Now, in order to speak, you got to have a voice box, right? Now, I'm not saying that they are in human form, right? But we have to, we have to think that they are. Right. So where have you come from, said the Lord to Satan. And he said, from roaming through the earth. So they're on the earth. Right. 
from roaming through the earth, he replied, and walking back and forth in it. Okay. And this is where Yahweh um, gives up Job to Satan and somewhat of a challenge, right? And, and Job goes through all of his trials and tribulations. Okay. Now, in Job, it says Satan. Okay. Now, was this same Satan in the garden? So it says in Romans, therefore, just as, uh, just as through one man, sin entered into the world. And I would assume, and we would have to assume, right, or presume, that this one man is the serpent, Satan, right? And death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, are these um, um, yeah, I'm going to ask you the way Bible Hug gives it to you. Are these superhuman beings? Okay. Are they extraterrestrial humanoids? The sons of God, Satan, and Yahweh. Right. Were they born birth somewhere? Were they birth on earth? Right? Are they higher intellectual humanoid beings? Okay. Because if you look at some older texts, like the Atrahasis and uh, the books of Sumeria, Ur, and Babylon in those times, right? Well, they talk about Inki and Elil and Anu and the family of the gods, right? That the family of the gods were originally down here doing the work when it says they had no man to till the ground and, and the soil in Genesis. Well, if you look in the Atrahasis, these beings called the Anunnaki, right? If you look at these scrolls, these scrolls that were written in clay in cuneiform, right? It says that these gods were doing the hard work and the toil of mining for resource, resources and... Um, um, minerals, natural minerals, precious minerals, gems, and things of that nature, right? And the question is, where do you find these uh, natural resource, resources in abundance, these natural uh, minerals, stones, you know, uh, things that we worship today? You'll find that in Africa, right? I don't know so much in Babylon. That could be a study. I don't know if there's more research sources, minerals, and natural gemstones and things of that nature in Babylon in that area more so than Africa, right? But it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, okay? Um, and the Atrahasis, it definitely tells you, like I said, that they created man, these Anunnaki, these higher intellectual beings that they have carved on the walls and things of that nature. And so, so, uh, as so in Egypt, you know, these, these gods are represented, right? In South America, these gods are represented. There's a story right these pyramids and things of that nature let you know that there was a story there was something going on possibly prior to what we consider us human beings before we were even created on this planet there could have been intellectual higher intellectual extraterrestrial extraterrestrial astral beings on this planet 
Well, if you really peruse the Bible and the Quran and, and the Torah and you tie that back into the Atrahasis and, you know, the Egyptian book of the dead and you understand what I'm saying? You connect this information to various older scrolls on this earth. Well, it would appear that there were aliens. Okay. Or, you know, we dumbed down. Okay. Or... You know, in the creation of human beings, you know, we were maimed. You know, it also says in the Atrahasis that the being that they needed to create a human was already here. They just needed, they needed to mix the God. They called themselves God or the God gene. You know what I'm saying? With the being that was on this planet, right? And you kind of see this played out in uh, a modern version in Prometheus. You understand what I'm saying? Which is really a dope movie, but I wish they could have did a little bit more with it. All right, let's continue to go back in. Okay. So, <clears throat> so you know that the prophets, when they wrote, right, the, 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 uh, malicious kings, the oppressive kings back then were also being compared to Satan or the serpent. And then you will find that if you look in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, and I'll read it. It says, oh, oh, how you have fallen from heaven. Okay. How you have fallen from heaven. Now is heaven a physical place? Or was heaven, you know, uh, a structure, you know, where these gods were very up high in the sky, per se, maybe at the top of a skyscraper, you know what I'm saying? But they were pyramids back then, but now we have skyscrapers. So, you know, these gods were possibly at the top of these skyscrapers, you understand? And uh, the people were down at the bottom right and that could have been heaven or whatever or is heaven really outside of earth's atmosphere you dig me and it's somewhere out there right O star of the morning son of dawn you have been cut down to earth you have you who have weakened the nations now remember sin came by one one man right but you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Okay. So he's considered a star and the sons of God are considered stars as well. You understand? So when we talk about the true stars, okay, we know that uh, the form of the human being today, genes, cells coated in melanin, right? have the same uh, solar activity going on within the body, which is life, that the stars uh, create and give off, right? So representatives of the stars, and this is why they are called stars. When you look at a star, right, and you're on a planet where there are stars or one sun, you know, by example, on planet Earth in regards to creation, then these stars in human form would be coded in eumelanin, right? This would be the best coding for the humanoid shape on planet Earth, right? So it says, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit on the mount of assembly. In the recesses of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, now he didn't say, uh, I will make myself like Jesus. Jesus doesn't exist right now. You did what I'm saying. And uh, I don't think none of the prophets then in the Old Testament wrote as if Jesus was coming. Okay. When you go to Malachi, they talk about the son of righteousness with healing in its wings. Right? Nevertheless, you will be thrust down the Sheol to the recesses of the pit. Okay. So,
this verse is Isaiah, right, speaking to the king of Babylon, telling him he will be thrown down and dethroned, right? And this is the story where the king was transformed into an animal or made to think he was an animal and stay in that state for uh, years until he repented. So already at that time, there are kings who are not following Yahweh right also the question is um maybe we don't understand that when you deal with ham sham and jepheth the bible story is a shemite story okay it is following the lineage of shem with components of ham right and jepheth in it right we're not following the book of ham and the book of Ham, in regards to religion, would be speaking about the line, really, of all the black people. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and Shem would also be black, but with straight hair. You feel me? Um, but they would tell you the Shemites, right? But in that, okay, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. You understand? They represent the Phoenician, the Mongolian, and uh, the Hindu. You understand what I'm saying? In, in, in regards to nine signs, the brothers could not represent the blacks, you know, the Asiatics, and the Caucasians, right? These three sons could not be the representatives because that's not realistic, right? It's not realistic. I'm not going to have a son with Afro hair and then a son with straight hair and then a, a, a white son, you understand, or what became white later on. You feel me? You, we cannot uh, procreate like that. Um, so he's talking about the Babylonian king and uh, it's likened to, he's likened to, by way of Isaiah, to Lucifer. We got all these names for the devil, Lucifer, serpent, Satan. You dig what I'm saying? But uh, now here's a verse that's pretty deep. Okay. And when you when you listen to this verse, let's think about hip hop. Let's think about, you know, um, Unfortunately, got to say it, although hip hop has brought some very good music, right? The, the golden era of hip hop, you understand? We must admit and uh, attest to that hip hop has went from a positive state to a negative state, right? Even in hip hop, we have different genres of hip hop now. You understand what I'm saying? So. In hip hop today, what is the demonstration? What is the demo? And let's peep out Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19. Okay. Uh, bear with me. Son of man. One man brought sin, right? And this is son of man. Take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God. You had a seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you are in eden right the garden of god so if, if, if satan you know that name means adversary like he knows all the he know what god can do and if you look let me go back okay when we go into satan Matter of fact, let me let me share this. Hold on. So let me share this. Alright. So this is Bible Hub, right? <clears throat> Which is uh I use this a lot. Okay. Uh you should use it too. If you're trying to read the Bible, because it will give you uh, the Hebrew translation. OK, so it says, where have you come from? Said the Lord to Satan from roaming through the earth. He replied and walking back and forth. So if you click on Satan, right, it'll tell you 
in this breakdown. And we have to say that this has been the breakdown since uh, Hebrew had anything to do with our religion, right? So you see the name, Satan adversary, also the name of the superhuman adversary of God. Okay. And when you look at God, it don't say superhuman adversary of the Lord, right? When you see God in Genesis, it translates, this God like right here, it translates as Elohim. So I take the Elohim to be the sons of God, the stars of God, right? So he's the adversary of God, all of them. What knowledge does Satan hold and have to be the superhuman adversary of all the Elohim? When he was once an Elohim himself. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Dr. York breaks down in um, El Gadush Loahat, the Holy Tablets, that in regards to them older stories, right, there was a book of destinies or a greater book, right? He, in a sense, you can say the book that contains the Quran, the Bible, uh, and the Tanakh, the Torah, the book of life, right? That Satan grabbed some pieces of this book and was able to turn people, right? But he is the superhuman adversary of God. All right. <clears throat> He's an opponent, the arch enemy of good. You dig me? Now, we can clean this all up using nine science. I'm just going out of the Bible right now, right? So we got the superhuman adversary of God. So now let's go back and read Ezekiel 28, 12, 19. Okay, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, so we got a superhuman where Adam and Eve wouldn't be superhuman. Okay, every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, the topaz, and the diamond. Okay, so it says that they were here mining for these precious stones. Right? For whatever reason. We're doing the same things. The ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and jasper, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald. Okay? and the gold the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you now it tells you that god tells you in genesis that the gold of that land is good how would he know that right we got that question from dr malachi senior how would god know that if he didn't understand what gold was in the first place right on the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Okay? You are the anointed cherub who covers, and I place you there. You are on the holy mountain of God. You are on the holy mountain of the Elohim. You walk, or is this the most high? Right? Because in the Atraha says, Enlil has a brother, and Enlil will be likened to Yahweh and Inky could be likened to, you know, the African representation of uh, the gods. You understand? <clears throat> but the Most High would be their father, which is Anu. But in the Bible, God is Elohim. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Who walks on stones of fire? Hindus do, but let's continue to go on. You are blameless in your ways. From the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. How? How did he acquire this unrighteousness? Okay. By the abundance of your trade, you were eternally filled with violence now is trade the trade that we're talking about they're trading 
these stones and things of that nature, you were eternally filled with violence since you was trading, you was a capitalist, or, and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as profane. So sin is before even the devil brought sin. So what is, what is the purpose of Jesus Christ? Sin is already before Satan. He sinned. Right, and, and, and to become the representative of sin. Who is sin? What is sin, though? Okay? Because when he sinned, he became the, the whole, the adversary for all of God. This is deep. You were eternally filled with violence and you sin. Therefore, I have cast you as profane from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the stones of fire, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. So he was out here like, you know what I'm saying? Psh, you feel me, right? I cast you to the ground. I put you before kings, though, that they may see you by the multitude of your iniquities and the unrighteousness of your trade. You profaned your sanctuaries, therefore I have brought fire from the midst of you. It has consumed you, and I have turned you to ashes on the earth. In the eyes of all who you see, all who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have become terrified, and you will cease to forever be. Okay, this is the king of Tyre, right? Satan is also being compared to... Uh, the king of Tyre, Nebuchadnezzar, right? But he was created. He was wise and beautiful. Okay? He's in human form. He was in Eden prior to the sin. Okay? He could have been one of the cherubs uh, uh, guarding the tree of life, the tree of knowledge. Uh, he was created perfect. So it says his sin came from within. Right? He was not subject to external temptation. So that's almost like I'm just going to do it my way regardless. Nobody influenced me. Right? Nobody influenced me. This all me. I'm about to take it all. The source of sin was pride in his beauty. His brightness. Right? He was covered. He was shiny. Like all, all the gemstones, the precious metals. Okay? The result of this sin was to try to lift himself up change his position beneath God to be equal with or above God. Okay. How could he think that? This sin caused his destruction. The prophets in the Old Testament and John in Revelation speak in terms that this has already been done, but they talk with the idea that if God has declared such a thing, it is a good it is as good as done. So they describe the final results as already accomplished, even if they are still in the future. Okay. Now he had he no longer has his position as one who stands at first before God or guards or covers. Now his spiritual abode is the pit of darkness. His place in the world is no longer as guardian of the tree, but as an enemy, as an advers adversary. Lurking about in a serpent's body, ready to attack those who come by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so I don't think he's in a serpent body. Okay, now ser the serpent and the devil today can be a conglomeration of powerful men who come together. And But back in the day, right? Matter of fact, I'll take that back. 
that could be one way of looking at the serpent but the serpent got a seed as well it tells you that in Genesis so there is a bloodline of Satan of this angelic being on this planet right there is a bloodline a son or a daughter on this planet who is has the bloodline of this of Satan the serpent and he said to the woman indeed has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden um people it, 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 it can be looked at you know why didn't he go the serpent go to Adam they say eat this apple right and question him and things of that nature why did he go to the woman okay the the God didn't speak to the woman right like some females be like this is a male chauvinistic book right but it tells you that it's God in the household, man as the Lord, right? The man has to listen to the Most High as the Lord of the house or the, even the Lord as a man on this planet. The woman has to listen to you. At least that's how it goes down in religion. So today, today, the people buck religion and things of that nature. They're spiritual. They're free. They're all of that stuff. But really... That's exactly what Satan did. If you understand what's going on and what's being said about Satan, Satan said, I'm not down with God's religion, right? One religion or not even a religion. The way that we doing things, I don't like it no more. You understand? I don't like it no more. I'm going to do something else. And when you don't have a religion or you're not following anything, you're just following the ways of man. You're out here being a consumer. You want to be an owner of things on the property. Not to say ownership is not good. I'm not saying that. But when you want to just think about you don't have no time for God. You got time for just hustling and, and, and being a capitalist. That's the devil. You understand? At least that's his attributes. You understand? And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. Now, my man is in here. My, my man is in here talking to Adam's woman. She wasn't scared or afraid or anything like that. Right. She wasn't scared. They having a conversation. In fact, the way she's talking he must have been beautiful and things of that nature because she says she, she, there's no, I'm afraid. You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. How come God didn't slap him right there? We like to be mystified. We like to believe in stories, right? And sometimes we don't even like, we, we're not into our own story. We in the story of others that fulfill us to make our, try to, to make our story great, to make us great, right? We need, we need influence. That's where we are today, right? We need content. This is content, <coughs> right? This is content. You know, some content can be deceptive. It's doing great. By way of the algorithm, it's doing great. But it's entertainment and it's distraction at the same time, right? You know how it go. Satan has fallen, no longer in the presence of God. Perhaps because of this, he no longer is beautiful, no longer is bright, right? In Corinthians 2, 11, 14, it says that Satan only disguises himself as an angel of light. Not that he is one, right? But he knows, he knows, you know, what was he stripped of? It was, you know, it says he was not beautiful any longer, but apparently he didn't scare Eve, though. You feel me? You know, and it, 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 it says in some places that, you know, uh, Adam and Eve walked with the angelic beings. Okay, so he couldn't look other than, 
right? He couldn't look other than, so they must have all looked or was familiar with each other and comfortable with each other, right? Um, now, it's interesting that also that in the book, the devil doesn't, is not really talking, right? God is doing all the talking and doing all the chastising. He's sweating the devil. The devil is not sweating God, right? Um, that's interesting. You know, the snake, I don't think that's, I don't think that's literal, I, you know, but hey, you know what? Um, I'm really open, especially based on nine science. I'm really open to there might have been reptilian beings on the planet Earth. Okay, there have been species of hum humans. They say there were there's multiple species of humans that have died out. Right, I, I wouldn't be opposed to some type of sleep stack on the planet. You dig what I'm saying? Um, there's nowhere where it says Satan has died, like, or was crucified like Jesus, you know. So the question is really, like I said, what is what was Jesus's purpose? Because as far as the book is concerned, he came down and he gave some enlightening sermons about what to do, not to do, and not how to succumb and fall to sin and fall to the devil. All right. What power would Jesus Christ have over the devil when the devil was walking to and fro with the sons of God? Okay, is Jesus a son of God? Well, in the sense of his birth, yes. But in the sense of the Elohim. Okay, is Jesus a Elohim? Or was Jesus just a representative of God in just human form? Even though... The attribute says he's heavenly. Okay. What do you think? Okay. You know, he's got miracles. You know, he's... He's saving people, you know. And then we got to talk about, you know, uh, Melchizedek, okay, and Abraham, and Jesus also being after the order of Melchizedek. Let me see if I can find. You know, who is Melchizedek who appeared to Abraham? Outside of Dr. Malachi, you're saying that he was Melchizedek? I don't think there's too many out there who even wrote about it, right? One who has become a priest, not by a law of succession, but by the power of an indestructible life. For it is testified, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Okay. Where Jesus, our forerunner, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. 
Now, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for on this basis the people received the law, why was there still need for another priest to appear? One in the order of Melchizedek and not in the order of Aaron. Who was Aaron? Moses' brother. But Jesus became a priest with an oath by the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Right? Let's look up Melchizedek. <clears throat> He's a king. A king and priest of Salem. Okay. Who are these kings? Are they like us? Right? Melchizedek. Let's see what. And then see, you don't have no information on them. So who is this person? My king is right. An early king of Salem. Okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. Let's show that. Let me go back and show that. My bad. All right. So here go all the verses. My bad. I was reading them. Okay. So then we went into Melchizedek, right? <clears throat> and this is the Hebrew way of saying my king is right, an early king of Salem. Let's see if we can go in here and find Salem. Salem, peaceful, early name of, would that be Jerusalem? Early name of Jerusalem, okay? Jerusalem, when did it change? Okay, so in those lands, there was a king called Melchizedek. Where is Yahweh at? Is Yahweh in Jerusalem as well? But he's a king though. Okay. He's a king. Yeah, so um who who today, right? At least out of black people following the ways of Yahweh because Yahweh would be in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ is in the New Testament and Jesus Christ's New Testament is not a, a Hebraic text, it's a Greek text. It's a Greek text. When we look at Jesus Christ, what does it take us back to? Dealing with language. Oh, it's not in there. It's Jesus. The Christ is Jesus. The Christ. Why is it not letting me search for Jesus? Do I have to capitalize? Come on, what's going on? Hmm. 
man. Um, where's Joshua in here? That's their house. Is that what it is? Uh, So this is what I'm looking for. And see, look, when you go in there, that's why Jesus wasn't popping up. So let's, let's test it. Let's test this. Let's test it. Why is it coming up now? It's all good. All right, so let's go back into Jesus, right? It's all good. Just want to get to the to the info anyway. Okay. Um, <clears throat> translation in Greek. E I Zeus. E I Zeus. E I Zeus. Also, three other Israelites that got the same name. Okay. Jesus, the transliteration of the Hebrew term, Yehoshua, Jehoshua, contracted to Joshua, which means Yahweh saves. Okay. So when Jesus is talking in the New Testament, He's talking about Yahweh's way of living, right? And he said he didn't come to change the law, but fulfill it, okay? <clears throat> Jesus the Christ is his human name as the incarnate eternal son of God. The Christ, the divine Messiah the second person of the Holy Trinity, okay? Now, it's just talked about in the Old Testament. Is there a Holy Trinity in the Old Testament? Christ, his title means the anointed one, the eternal precarnate logos, okay? Logos, so John, John 1, 1 through 18. Let's, let's, let's crack that open. John 1. What was it? 1 and 18. Man. Give me a minute. I'm looking for that verse again. Logos, John 1, 1 through 18. There is no 1 through 18, though. That's what I thought. John 1. Okay, um, salute, man, what the hell is going on? Like, that's not what I'm looking for. John 1, 1 through 18. All right, so, my bad. That which was from the beginning, 
which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested into us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that you may be that your joy may be full so this is representative of logos um the word right the word will be the logos this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him so god right this is going to change this is not elohim anymore right they've made this uh singular okay because it would say god is the light right god is light it's making this singular you understand and in him no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This can't be correct. Okay. Because the, the orchestrator of sin is still on the planet. Now, this is in regards to you just kind of like being a good person. But just because you a good person doesn't mean sin or karma or anything negative is not going to happen to you, right? We can hope, and right, we'll apply that to God, some apply it to Jesus Christ, but bad shit happens to good people, okay? That the devil is so much of an adversary, right? Even the Son of God came down to turn man and woman away from you know, the clutches of the devil. You can be a good person and some bad shit still happens to you. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins. Like they say, now, from the New Testament, you are born in sin. It doesn't say that in the Old Testament, that you're born in sin, right? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, okay? If I say, hey, man, I killed that man, I'm going to go to prison for time, but... Jesus is faithful and, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. I still got to do that 15, 20 years though. Right. But I can go in jail and confess my sins and my life is about to be hard. And it will not stop anything. Jesus will not stop anything from happening in prison that is supposed to happen or not happen or will happen, right? If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us, okay? So... Let's go to John. This is John. I 
I want to find um, that he used the word. Let's see if I can go to John 1. Is this John? It's not John 1. It is John 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehend it not. Okay. So we're going to look at the word. Because it said Jesus is the word, right? Logos. <clears throat> Logos, a statement, a speech, divine utterance. You see that? Divine utterance. Okay. Now, Jesus is the word. Now, I'm about to take you. I'm about to take you. up out of this and show you how when we say that we the sons and daughters of Ta, you see this divine utterance and the logos came after it, right? So Jesus Christ is the logos speaking to a conclusion, a word being the expression of a thought. Word is preeminently used of Christ. In the beginning was the word right expressing the thoughts of the father through the spirit okay give me a minute let's go into top don't forget I asked you, what is the purpose of Jesus Christ? Is the devil still existing? How is he the ever superhuman adversary of God and the Elohim? Do they exist today? Do these do these bloodlines exist uh today, right? Hold on, I want to just give a proper breakdown. I need to find his attributes. Because when you really pay attention to Egyptian Egyptian science, <clears throat> you'll see, plus the Asian science, you know, I do believe that Africa and Asia once was a united kingdom of blacks, right, that brought all this, uh, this information and knowledge. Give me a minute. I just want to find... Uh, his uh, attributes. History of Ta. All right, um, document known as the Memphite Theology. Ta created humans through the power of his heart and his speech, right? Through his word, okay, there was not even a religion yet. The concept, having been shaped in the heart of the creator, was brought into existence through the divine utterance itself. Okay, so when you look at Jesus, with this being said, it's in a sense a consolidation and a copy from older African uh, stories of creation or realistic happenings of creation. They just don't have the whole story. Okay.
Okay, when you look at Yahshua, right? This is the breakdown on who. Shu is a god of ancient Egypt. All right. <clears throat> but let me come out here. This is doing too much. That's why I be liking Wikipedia, man. You just... Then you just burst out of there, right? Wow, uh, she already got that listed. Okay. <clears throat> so, we already know he's a divine utterance. This is to tell you more of the breakdown of time. So, Jesus is a copy. Okay. Jesus is a copy. But the devil... But Jesus can be made up. Okay, some don't think he was made up, but I'm showing you by way of the breakdown of, of, of his name. Okay, he is considered the Logos, the Word. When you talk about the Word, okay, you got to talk about Fatah. Okay, this is one of the gods, or if not the only God, who created through speech and divine utterance. That's what it says. Okay. So why would Jesus have the same connection to him? You dig me? After. Right? I mean, when you really dig in, to Todd's name, you can, you know, it'll take you, it'll take you to a real uh, rabbit hole, right? Ty Hill, creator of the material universe, and Mandianism, Sabianism, right? All right, we are familiar with Sabianism. Okay, so what do you think? Uh... Is, is was Jesus Christ really birthed and created to smash the devil? Is the devil still here? Right? Is Jesus now with this information a copy of the older creator God? Who is Yahweh? Where would you is, is Yahweh only found in in the Bible? Is the Bible a copy from the Hatrahasis? You know, with stories and chapters added to cr make it a creation book and uh, a false historical book. Is the devil a superhuman adversary to God that still exists by way of bloodline? Okay. And are we pretty much sinners following the ways of the devil perpetrating like we following God? What are you paying attention to? Entertainment, jewels, riches, and things that are like, of, of the like and the life? Or are you really a person of God? You know what I'm saying? That ain't trying to be in the limelight, you know? I'm a sinner. <laughs> For real. <laughs> but the only constant in the universe is change. And the more knowledge you get, the wiser you become. You start wanting to become more about who you really are as opposed to being influenced, right? Being influenced and 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 being on a path of darkness betrayal, deceit, you know, being in the circle of haters and, you know, being around distractors and detractors that keep you away from your path, okay? Now, with age, that wisdom comes, but the words is all the same, okay? The words is all the same if you was taught it. That means a five-year-old can learn what I just spit right here. You know, and you can be 45 down the line, you get it. You might have went through a gang of shit to get there, right? But the question is, 
if the devil still exists, Satan still exists, and he's a superhuman adversary uh, um, to God, what are you supposed to do as a righteous person? With that being said, I'm out. Y'all enjoy the day or night. Be peaceful. Grand Kush.